My name is Zachary Charles, and I am part owner of a company called Saves by B Sneakers. Um, I do this with my brother, who is 16 years old. He came up with the idea about two years ago. He decided one night that after seeing the news coverage of Haiti, he saw a little child walking around on the dirt with rough feet, you know, all bruised up, and he said, this isn't right. So we decided that we were going to create a sneaker that for every sneaker that someone purchased, we would send a pair of sneakers to a place in need. Not only Africa, but New York City, you know, Alabama, Israel, any country that you know, there are children without sneakers, we would do our best to send a pair of sneakers to them. So how do we come about this? We dealt with a factory in China. We manufactured the sneaker. It cost us $25,000 to bring the sneakers over. We got 2,500 pairs of sneakers. Our goal was to sell 1250. We received the sneakers in February of, uh, of this year. The reason why I say 1250 is because we would give the other 1250 to charity. However, if the sneakers were selling fast, 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 we would you know, give as many as we can to charity as well as make a rush order to bring more sneakers to the United States. The sneakers come in one color as of now. It's white. I have a pair of sneakers here. I can pass it around just so everyone can see it. Um, that's a, a size seven women. Um, our sneakers run for men from six. If you would like it, you can have it. Um, our sneakers run for men six, sizes six through 12, for women six through 10. And we are working on youth sizes at the moment for you know size three, size four, size five. Um, we decided that we needed, we can custom make. We decided that we needed to find places to distribute this sneaker. Uh, we have teamed up with three different charities. Actually, you can two slides. Um, one of them is Hoops for Hope which helps you know, bring thousands of different things to different children in Zimbabwe and South Africa. Another charity is KIDS, Kids in Distress Situations. And the third one is Met Council, who deals a lot with the poor community, the poor Jewish community. Um, so far, we have sent over 500 pairs of sneakers to Zimbabwe. Hoops of Hope has donated, has brought over 500 pairs of sneakers. We have more crates going out to KIDS. And our goal right now, we have several long-term goals. Our goals are the next shipment will be different colors because the first shipment had to be white. So it'll be the same looking sneaker, but you know, red, orange, whatever, you know, whatever, several different colors. We're hoping that eventually we could team up with universities for licensing agreements and do school colors along with school emblems. Um, we have a very good uh, in a, a connection at Ohio State University, and we have inquired about getting the licensing for their emblem and selling it in their school stores for you know school spirit and you know philanthropy throughout the school. Um, the big thing that differentiates our sneaker from other sneakers types, you know, Tom's does something very similar. Other sneakers, you know, uh, other competitors do something very similar. But from what I've heard, from what I've been told, and for some of the, the minor research that I have done, it seems as though the, the sneakers that Tom sends out to these people are not the exact quality as the ones they're selling to people. Our quality is the exact same, because we believe in equality, and we believe that um, if I'm walking down the street with my pair of sneakers, and you're walking down with your, pair, with your pair of sneakers, they are the exact same sneakers, same design, same color, same quality. So you have no idea if I'm the one who's receiving the sneakers or I'm the one who's giving the sneakers. And we're doing our best to grow this. Um, we've had great PR. We've, uh, my brother was New Yorker of the Week on, on New York One. We have been written up in Life and Times on Jay-Z's um, website. We have uh, a segment on do something.org, shoes.tv. And we are dealing with um, a company which we cannot name at the moment on uh, making a custom sneaker for a very big charity. Thank you very much.
My name is Yair Saperstein. I am together with a large team, Shimon Farber, Tom Eri, Spiegel, Feder, Yosef Ashur, Ari Kuberfein, and Menachem Spira. The reason we have such a large team is because there are so many willing and able volunteers who want to join such a program. What is this program? It's called Start the USA. What we do is we design, develop, and then teach science curricular modules, hands-on lab modules, in public schools and in private schools. We started a year and a half long trial, which is coming to a close now, which has been wildly successful. And we bring in a group of 10 volunteers into the school, into the middle school or the elementary school, and we then interact with them and have them do the hands-on experiments in order to learn physics, neuroscience, chemistry, engineering, and biology, among other things also. So we'll go on to the next slide. What I want to discuss today are the absolutely. What I want to discuss today are the services that we offer, the design of how it works, the value that we provide, and how it is now currently spreading and how it will spread even more in the future. So as far as the services, if you take a look at the statistics, more than 1.2 million American students drop out of school each year. Dropouts from the class of 2007 cost our nation, cost our nation more than 300 billion in lost wages, taxes, and productivity. Basically, it is something that is necessary, and we have no competitors who provide the lesson plans already, bring in the willing and able students, and go into the classroom. So we have no competitors. Our uh, START program currently operates in five classes at a budget of $6,000 per year. Our funding, our initial grants, have come from the following sources. The American Chemical Society, the Dean's Office of Yeshiva University, the Yeshiva College Student Association, the Black Caucus of the United States Congress, and private anonymous donors. We expect that much like Teach for America um, survives on philanthropic donations, that we will be able to continue these. But just in case, we also have a backup plan that we will invest our um, part of our endowment so that that will continue to provide a stable, secure source of funding for generations. Next slide. So our modular organization works as follows. We have in our school now for the trial period a central coordinator which goes into each of those five classes, which directs those five classes that we run, but does not go into the actual class, just provides assistance for the school coordinators for each of those classes. Within each of those classes, there are the group leaders who, who direct the uh, modules that happen in each of the classes, biochem, physics, and so on. And then each of those group leaders takes in about 10 undergraduate students into the classroom to teach. By using these super leadership student leaders, we are providing a uh, known method of leadership which allows the students who are leading in this way to take on that active role even without having official training because by being placed in that role and by working with other willing and able students, they are able to take on that, that uh, known role of super leadership as it's called. We also have semi-autonomous affiliates. So how is this spreading across the United States? Why is it called Start to the USA? Because this box can be taken across to all different colleges. It's not being run only here, this is the trial period, but it's actually spreading out to other places. We can go on to the next slide. So in recognition of our success, actually yesterday, we were awarded from the American Chemical Society for the work that we do in Project Star here in Yeshiva University. American Chemical Society also put out an article in the February and March edition of the National American Chemical Society magazine, a spotlight on SART. And the reason that we encourage this and are very proud of this is because much as the way that Google started, that it was just a superior product and it spread by word of mouth because it was so good, it spread in the news and other people knew it was so good, we are doing the same thing. We are featured on New York One News as well. And the reason that these are so important is because now other schools, other universities are seeing this. We were actually contacted by a bunch of other schools, most recently from schools in from colleges in Iowa and Jamaica, who want to take up our program. And so that covers the services that we offer. We offer education hands-on, um, experience-based learning, much as Sims likes to do. We took a field trip actually to Citromax Flavor Lab so that the kids can experience it even out of the class, but certainly within the class they have hands-on modules. 
we are providing the education hands-on, as well as providing pamphlets and manuals, which we are selling to the universities who are interested, and online videos, which we've already started to post. We have the semi-autonomous leadership in each of the schools. Our monetary situation is set because we have the philanthropists, much like Teach for America, we are investing our endowment, and we are selling the pamphlets and manuals. Um, and the value is that we are enabling the hundreds to enable the thousands. By having the willing and able volunteers, which there is in every college who is it for sure going to be interested in this, as we've seen from many who already contacted us, they will then go into the public and private schools to teach the elementary and middle school students, who then, when they grow up, are going to want to do the same. So while, well, while you may take it or leave it, the future of American education is in your hands. Thank you. Remember when you rushed into your grandma's house or your mother's house just to get a bite from that fresh, homemade food they just prepared? That homemade taste is hard to come by, but not anymore. Because this is what Graffy Salads is all about. Graffy Salads is a, is a fresh, is an all-natural preservative spree kosher salad company specializing in Mediterranean flavors and bits. We deliver freshness, quality, and taste in every one of our products at an affordable price. Who do we, who are our target markets? Well, we, we, as of now, we have, we cater to um, catering halls, supermarkets, restaurants, cafeterias, nursing homes, hospitals, and private events. Right now, we are uh, working in the word of mouth uh, concept, uh, sh sh marketing concept. We're trying to grow the brand. In order to do that, we have been sampling. We've been using the trucks to, you know, to go around neighborhoods at our local communities. So we deliver stuff. We promote events. We sponsor events. We're trying to encourage feedback from our customers. The the unique thing about us is that we're we we. We create a service as well as a product. And on some of our unique selling points, well, if you're a business, so assuming I'm going to sell it business to business, I offer, I will decrease the, I was, I'm, I'm going to reduce the cost in labor. I will cut the cost in raw materials. I will cut the cost of storage. And I will decrease the cost of accounts that you have to deal with. You know, owning a business, you have to deal with all these accounts and deliveries. And even like when I tried to get this product into YU, the first thing he said to me, listen, you know, we have a lot of accounts. It's very hard to get another account because, you know, it's just a hassle and a headache. With me, you only need me to supply the product because I, prov I, I have the, the the product and the service. You don't need to go and get the raw materials and then make sure to create it and then hire people to make it. I do everything for you. From business to customer view, I, I create a variety. I give you a fresh product. I give you delicacy. It's quick, it's healthy, and as one of the other contestants mentioned about obesity, this is you know, some of my products come in low, low fat, some of them are gluten free. It's preservative free. You really can't go wrong with this. What's the future of graphy salads? Well, what we did was we, we were first trying to establish our brand and you know get our name out there. As soon as that's gonna happen, we're hoping to open uh, to open ten different cafes in which we it's already funny that I already have buyers for the franchise, it's not created. But what we're going to do is we're going to open um, 10 cafes in which you won't need a kitchen. And I know because I want to get the permits and I have to tell you that it, this business took me to launch two years. Over two years because, you know, living in you know in the United States at all, to get permits and to get, you know, licenses and to go through the fire marshal, everything takes time. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create small cafes where all you need is a counter and, you know, a washroom or something like that and where it doesn't even have to be big, not more than a thousand square foot, where you'd be 500 to a thousand square foot, depending on where that's to be entering a cafe, where you'd be able to um, serve work. We're also in the process of merging in with another company, which we're going to produce um, fresh bread, uh, cookies, 
these uh, things like that, where we're going to the, we're going to have the small cafes where people can sit and you know basically they'll buy that there's going to be famous coffee we're putting on there, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a franchise. With this, we're hoping you know people are going to know the brand, they're going to buy the franchise. So what have I paid for this? So our startup cost was close to a million, quarter of a million over two years. It included renovations, equipment, facilities, license permits, inventory, labor, management, and the truck. Um, our current gross revenue is it's taken to the uh, account that we were closed over the up. So it was 5,000 per week. We make about 5,000 per week. As of now, we have four distributors. The reason it's poor and it's low, it's gonna grow, but you have to take it, we are really hand making everything. There are no machines involved. It, the, the, the moment we put machines in there is when we're, I, I feel like the quality is gonna go down. So the reason the distributors are for is because I screen them and make sure they sell my product the way I want them to sell it. It's not just come take, it, it, it's not real estate where you can just, you know, make up an equation. I make up all of that. I have profit as now, it's about 20% on all sales. Within 18 months, um, I predict uh, I will make back that money. 